Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Sunday morning Calvary worship experience. Uh, a lot of great music this morning. Uh, Waymaker, miracle worker, my God, that is who you are. Um, simple words that heal, that turn worlds around, mend every heart. I love that last song. Um, I got a little action here this morning. Miles is running around, so if I look distracted, that's why keeping him from scaling the uh, bookcase in the corner. <laughs> and uh, glad to be here this morning. This dysfunctional Christian, as I've decided to call myself, oh, crazy. I need Sunday mornings to put myself back together to get through the week. Um, if you heard me last week, I talked about um, how I can tell my state of mind, my closeness to my God is reflected in how I drive. And I wanna let everybody know that I drove well this week. I was patient and calm and uh, tried to look up instead of down at the road and look up at the mountains or wherever I was traveling. So uh, kind of fits with the Psalm this morning, Psalm 24 and um, with the Mercy Me music was awesome. I do wanna say as that slide comes up on behalf of Kate Clark, thank you to everyone that continues to dust and clean and get our sanctuary ready. Um, as I was dusting the pews, I was trying to think of the families that came before us, the hundreds of years of um, congregants that sat in those pews with their fancy hats and their high heels and uh, kids playing with the pencils. And um, so it gave me a little bit of peace as I was dusting and sweating and uh, glad to be a part of it. And I want to say thank you to Kate Clark who continues to keep us organized and moving forward. And uh, you see everybody, Peter and Thomas and Ken Mitchell and the boys and uh, Jim Ferguson, uh, John and Kate Clark, Michelle Stowe was there um, too yesterday. So thank you very much for those of us that, uh, to all of us that keep our church uh, open in the community, our doors are wide open, even when we're worshiping from home. Uh, I don't know if there's other announcements. There is a session meeting this morning, 1030. Damien sent out agenda and a new link. So please be aware that he's using a different platform this morning. Uh, so please try to log on early in case you have any trouble getting into the meeting. Um, always lots of work to cover these days with uh, trying to get the sanctuary and fellowship hall going. Hey, it's Jim. Uh, Hi, Jim. During a time of offering, I can tell about the tour of the students from Westchester County yesterday. Okay. Excellent. The, okay. We'll, count, we'll count on it. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody have any other announcements out there before we move along this morning? Did I miss anything? July 19th will be the next fruit, uh, fruit stand. So Monday, July 19th, if you can help, or if you're looking for some fresh greens, please join us. And uh, with that, I am going to tell this functional Christian to take a deep breath of the Holy Spirit drop my shoulders and be present where my feet are. And please join me in the call to worship. Blessed are those who have not seen. And yet and to come to me. Give thanks to the Lord for the Lord is good. God's steadfast God's love and endures forever. Our first hymn this morning, O Master, let me walk with thee. Good morning, good morning. What a blessed day it is that we come together as we share God's grace. Won't you bow your heads with me for our prayer of confession. Gracious God, we are grateful. For your accepting our brokenness as a sin offering. We know that more often than not, we fail to give you the deserved praise because we are pursuing people, places, and things that do not lead us to satisfaction. 
but rather despair. We struggled for years and years looking for comfort without your spiritual counsel and wonder why we continue to be wanting. Therefore, we come surrendering to your will and your way. We come seeking a change through a newfound trust in you. Let the words of our mouths be acceptable. We pray, amen. How challenging it is as we look out into the world and we suddenly discover that we are not the only ones in the world, but rather we are here sharing the world with other creatures of God. And yet our brokenness often is entangled in our pursuit of things that do not belong to us, but rather belong to God. How challenging it is to realize how small we are compared to the world in which God has created. And sometimes it is in that limited view of the world that we are able to experience the full grace of God. We're thankful that God gives us grace. And when we come to our senses, we're grateful that God gives us pardon. Thanks be to God. This is our salvation. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Father, wash away the dust from my eyes and confusion from my mind. Cleanse me to prepare me as a vessel for your grace and your word. Give me your peace so that I may, I may have confidence that it is your word that I hear. Teach me, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Psalms, Psalm numbered 24. Reading from the New Revised Standard Version, here, Psalm number 24. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. For he has founded it on the seas and established it on the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his place? Those who have clean hands and pure hearts, who do not lift up their souls to what is false and do not swear deceitfully. They will receive the blessing from the Lord and vindication from the God of their salvation. Such is, such is the company of those who seek him, who seek the face of the, of the God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Who is 
the king of glory, the Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Amen. Good morning, good morning. Psalm 24. Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's, and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it, God has founded it on the seas and established it on the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in God's holy place? Those who have clean hands and pure hearts who do not lift up their souls to what is false and do not swear deceitfully. They will receive blessing <clears throat> from the Lord and vindication from the God of their salvation. The earth is the Lord's. The earth is the Lord's. It's hard to believe that 50 years ago, around 1970, Bobby, Marvin Gaye, a rhythm and blues uh, artist and also son of a preacher, came out with the song that we heard uh, early in our prelude, mercy, mercy me. Things ain't what they used to be. And while I danced my tail off when I was hearing that song, I seemed to overlook the words because of the rhythm. And who could imagine that 50 years ago, a rhythm and blues artist who was at the pinnacle of his artistry penned these words around ecology. Long before the word ecology became uh, active in the public square. What was striking about that video was everything that he spoke about 50 years ago, we are deeply engaged in today. Another fascinating thing today is that this 24th Psalm also brings attention to me, I don't know about you, that everything that I have Everything that I am, everything that I'm not, all things belong to God. It is a hard reality that I have sometimes forgotten. It's very easy to uh, live my life in ways as if no one else 
is to follow me. I'm supposed to live, ride, or die, as they say, not worrying about the future. But it has been very troubling to me this summer as I've kind of plunged uh, Heather into this notion of the environment. And it, you know, it helps us in some ways as we uh, re seek to rebuild our, our congregational building because we want our building to be safe for future generations. And in being safe for future generations, uh, it seems to me, Ken, that there are things that we just can't do anymore because it disrupts the future of our children. The earth is the Lord's. As we look at this text, we discover that, particularly in verse 1, in the Talmud, it has been said that the priests would sing a particular psalm for every day of the week. And, and this one was the psalm for the first day of the week. Of course, it is the first day of the week that we are reminded, what? That the earth is the Lord's. Rabbis taught that since the earth and everything in it contain, contain, that it contains belongs to the Lord, it is sacrilege to enjoy anything of the world without first giving thanks to God's blessings. How often have I spent my life using resources around me, never giving thanks, never giving thought to what God has provided. It was not the work of my hands, but it was the creation of God. Recently, uh, we were told that the Hubble telescope, uh, Hubble telescope was faltering in space that it has somehow outlived uh, its <laughs> usefulness, in other words, its projected usefulness, but yet it continued to work in space. And one of the discoveries, I think this, is incre this increases my sense of how small we are, is that there are other galaxies far older than ours that exist. We're not clear about whether there has been life on those galaxies, but there are other moons and suns and planets that exist well beyond what we know of as Earth. Too often, we've even treated the Earth as if it's so exceptional that God limited life only to us here. What this says is that with the help uh, and the vision of scientists, and this is not really fake news, even though some folks would like to think it is, that God is wider, always wider than I can see. That God is always reaching out beyond the boundaries of my thinking. That, that the God is always at the heart, at the very heart, of life. And yet, we are hearing words like climate change and, and how it's happening. And, you know, for a person like me who likes to use uh, a lot of things that, you know, out of convenience, let's say, let's just say, uh, Bobby, just say, how much plastic do you have in your house, Bobby? Amen. I can't tell you how many baggies I've used. How, how about, uh, styrofoam cups. Somebody help me here. Yeah. Uh, we, there are just so many, even, even the paper that we somehow use, disregarding how that pulp used to live in a tree. Maybe I'm just getting old, Jim, but I'm realizing, yes, I am getting old. Thank you for agreeing. Uh, yeah, I'm realizing that you know, I'm no longer going up the hill, Bobby. 
I'm going down the hill. And because of that, I need to realize for people who are still coming and being birthed in the earth, that they too have a future. And that I am just a steward, Kate, of what God has given us today. Because the earth is the Lord's. The earth is lost. So I'm challenging us today. Really, I'm really challenging me. Listen, don't, you know, I'm just a sinner trying to be, you know, saved. As uh, one of uh, my dear friends says, I'm a dysfunctional Christian. And in my dysfunction, I am trying to make not only a, a better place in my life or a better attitude, but create an abounding environment for future generations. The earth belongs to God. Let's not just say the words, but live out those words, protecting what God has given us to share. Let the words of our mouths, the meditations of our hearts be acceptable, we pray. Amen. Well, we're grateful to God that God allows us this platform. I invite you right now to open your mics and let us pass the peace <clears throat> with one another. Peace of the Lord be with you. And also, and also, and also with, with you. you. Good to see everybody. I understand we have about 17 people on Facebook, which is a large uh, gathering for us. We're so grateful. We're so grateful. Uh, and we're, as we have greeted one another, we ask that if you have a prayer concern, uh, we ask that you voice your concern and then mute your mics uh, afterwards, please. Are there any prayer concerns or celebrations? I would just, um, first of all, I want to say thank you for the music this morning. That last um, selection was touching as soon as that uh, boy started speaking. Gosh, it was just uh, went right through me. Thank you for that. Um, this Wednesday, I think the 14th is the 20 year anniversary of the day my sister passed. And I just want to hold my nephew up, my family. Amen. Amen. Is there someone else? Yes, sir. Prayers for, our, prayers for our friend Mike, um, who's in the hospital um, more and more frequently due to failing health. For Mike. Yes, yesterday was the anniversary of my great niece's husband being lost in the airplane crash in Mississippi. I want to keep them in prayer. Amen. Well, this week, the Lewis family has been going through some things. We celebrate uh, a successful uh, five-hour surgery with my daughter. Uh, she uh, saw her doctor, and uh, he uh, celebrates with us uh, over the realities of the surgery. We're grateful. Also, uh, my granddaughter, Anastasia, is now at Rockland Psychiatric Center uh, for more intensive uh, treatment opportunities. We pray that God will give her 
those things that she needs as she perseveres and lives life. And we thank you for, we thank God for the strength that God has provided me and Cynthia as we struggle. I mean, it's a struggle. You know, I'm a preacher, but I struggle too. Uh, probably I struggle more because, you know, I'm not only carrying the weight and emotions of my, my personal family, but the weight and emotions of the church family. We celebrate that the person that we talked about uh, last week needing, last week needing uh, medical coverage, but it was successful to get treatment. Amen. Amen. We need each other, brothers and sisters, like it or not. Amen. We need each other. And uh, it takes a pandemic to realize that we need one another. How about that? Amen. So we're grateful. Are there any other prayer concerns? Kate Clark, do you see any concerns there on Facebook? I don't. Okay. Won't you mute yourselves and bow your heads with me? Eternal God, we're grateful that you alone are holy and healing. We remember our sister, our nephew, our friend our neighbor, as we all experience sometimes the travail of life, we celebrate new life, we celebrate successes, we celebrate because we come, have come to realize that we are not islands unto themselves, but we are dependent upon one another. We ask all of us to continue to grant us your grace and mercy. Forgive us of our brokenness and our sins. Enable us, O oh Lord, to unify our spirits according to your will. Because we fully know that the earth belongs to you. We are mindful also, Lord, of the words of our Lord and Savior who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors, lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. Jim Ferguson here at our time of offering. Thank you to all the volunteers yesterday. It could not have come at a better time. 10 architectural students in the Orange County government historian stopped by at Calvary on a tour of our historical neighbor yesterday. I expected students 21 to 25 years old. Youngest I estimated was pushing 30 and the most senior about 50. They arrived a half hour late, so I expected a quick walkthrough, you know, to try to get back on schedule, but just the opposite happened. I sensed they wanted the full tour. I was able to show them Fellowship Hall in the part an architect would play after a church fire. The same with the steeple tower project. In the sanctuary, it was as if Withers and Edison were present. After many appreciative thank yous to Calvary, 
I thought a souvenir of their tour would be in order. Not having time to have our history booklet printed, I decided to offer each a piece of the tile floor from the sanctuary. It was like handing a piece of chocolate to a child. A positive day for Orange County, a positive day for the city of Newburgh, a positive day for Calgary. Of course, all made possible by our offerings. Now, let us listen to Joseph Bush as we consider our offering perform Litz Sonata in B minor. <laughs> doxology and prayer dedication. Please join me in a prayer to get dedication. You have given us the greatest gift of all, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. In gratitude, we return to you a portion of what you have given us to serve you here and around this world. Amen. The earth is the Lord's. This is my father's world. 
this world is not my home, but rather I've been asked to share this world, be a steward of this world for future generations of children of God and creatures of the land. It is my hope and prayer that we can change our ways, recenter our focus, be purposeful about our mission, that God may continue to bless us. And now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of God's Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us and those whom we love, both now and forevermore. Let every heart say, Amen.